Welcome back to the No Boring Stories podcast. I, of course, am Alex Street, and I am joined today by the one and only Jillian Tedesco. Jillian, how are you doing today? I'm good today. Today has been a great day. Today has been a great day. How were you yesterday? Well, I was sick a week ago. I had oh yeah, COVID. yeah, and I got pneumonia, so I was down and out for like twenty three days. So I've, I'm just really excited to be here today and like just Come be- on. because I felt good for I didn't feel good for a very long time. And my friend is in town today, so mm-hmm. I'm and hang out with her. That's such a. I mean, that's, that's it, right? So it's just noticing things like that where someone's like, yeah, today is, is a good day. And then as soon as you open that up, you realize, oh, like you just casually say, yeah, for 23 days, I was down with, with COVID, yeah. with pneumonia. Like that's, that's serious stuff. Yeah. And here you are bringing your energy to us today. Yeah. Today is a good day. So this is how we, this is how we go. This is life, isn't it? Mm-hmm. <laughs> this is so good. Okay, so look, uh, we are going to, open up your story. We're going to talk about why you do what you do now, the passion that you bring to your work, your podcast, your message, everything that you bring and, and what life is for you, but ultimately why you do this. I'm, I'm excited to find out and to dig in more. And where I want to start with this though, I told you right ahead of time, you know, you fill out this form ahead of time and you kind of let me know some stuff about you and one question I love to ask is, is what are your three favorite stories? And I just want to highlight the three that you put here because they're so like, I just feel like I don't, how do they possibly fit? And I think that these, t- this tells a lot about you. So you've got, Go ahead, say you, what they are, and you put, you, you put shoe dog, the, the Phil Knight story of Nike wedding crashers starring the fabulous Owen Knight, Owen Wilson and shoot. Vince Vaughn, there we go. And then the story of Moses and the Exodus. I'm sure that there's a through line there somewhere, but I'm going to need you to open up (laughs) and help me understand, you know, how do these stick out for you? Those three are like me to a T. So there's business. So I resonate with Shoe Dog. I mean, he Mm -hmm. started out of the back of his, his, his hatchback and he struggled for, I want to say like a decade, like he really struggled hard and yeah. Um, just watching him, the, the book shoe dog, I read it on vacation and I think I read it in four days and it is a thick book Mm -hmm. down. I was just so intrigued, um, by his story. And like, um, he talks about the things that he did and like the lies he, he, he told people when he was like in boardrooms with like how much money he had to get a deal and he didn't have the money. And then the next day, the money would show up somehow. It was just amazing how his story got wow. off. And then Wedding Crashers is, is my favorite movie of all times. It's <laughs> hilarious. I love Vince Vaughn's sense of humor. To this day, my husband and I quote many lines from that movie um, all the time. So it's yeah. just is my sense of humor um i love old school you go for vince vaughn i mean i i like the old i like old school earmuffs you know that vince vaughn i mean he's the same character it's the same thing he's the same thing yeah (laughs) so um actually at my wedding um when i got married i got married in vegas it wasn't like a cheesy wedding it was a nice wedding but um i said i want as much wedding crasher stuff as we can have at the (laughs) wedding and one of my good friends Um, He didn't tell me he was going to do this, but he printed out a picture of Olin Wilson and um, Vince Vaughn's face, blew him up, put him on sticks. And when I walked down the aisle, uh, he had them holding up like they were there in the congregation. And when I walked down the aisle, I screamed, no way. (laughs) Awesome. (laughs) Um, and we had not exactly what you know your your awaiting groom wants to hear oh, you <laughs> know well, way it's so funny but um and then brilliant exodus um so i used to watch the movie the ten commandments with my mom like every easter the one with charles heston in yeah. fact i just bought the dvds i think last year because i was like i need to have these mm-hmm. um I've, I've i've read the book of exodus many times and you know a lot of the mosaic law refers back to Moses. So like, I've just yeah. studied that a lot. And so, um, that story is just special to me. Um, yeah. so what, okay. So I, I love this and, and this is where, uh, again, like with my background. So I used to teach, I would, I would 
anytime that I would teach, whether it's kids or adults, whatever, I would, I would, if I needed something in a pinch, I would go to, you know, I'd pull out a Jesus story, probably feeding the 5,000 or, you know, uh, the adulterous woman and kind of what that situation was and how he rebuked the, the men present, all that stuff. Like I could go to these things really easy. I had a few in my pocket or I would go to Exodus three and Exodus four, the specifically the burning bush. And this story of Moses has been so foundational to who I am as a leader, who I am as a man and how I show up today with three simple words that he says, when he's standing at the bush, he says, here I am. And those three words, I actually have, I've recorded a podcast all about it earlier uh, last month. And, and there's something about that that stands out to me. What is it about that story, that journey, whether it's, you know, those first 12 chapters of him becoming a leader and bringing people out of slavery, what really stands out to you about that? You know, I just think like, remember when he had that conversation with God and he's like, I'm not the right person for this. Like, I can't yeah. speak. You don't want me. Like, mm -hmm. I think of myself a lot of times, like, um, I didn't graduate college. Um, I didn't, I wasn't a good student when I was mm -hmm. in school. Not like I was a bad kid, but I struggled with education. I just am not like a book person to like read, take tests. Math is a challenge. Um, but I've definitely found my groove in life and I have figured out how to use my strengths. Yeah. Um, but for many years, um, that would, my, my like ability to learn and how I used to think I was not smart. That was something I had to overcome and looking at Moses and realizing like when I read his story and I realized he just had faith in God, like he had to do a really big job and, um, you know, just, you know, he, he had gave a little pushback, but God was like, no, you're going to yeah, do that. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I think about, so when we get into my story, this is, yeah. this is connect a little bit more, but my business I have today is because of God. And we mm. can talk all about that, but God gave me a second chance. And, you know, I sometimes wonder why he chose me to lead this company because I'm like, I'm not the smartest person, but I've always felt like God cares more about your av availability than your ability. Mm. And, if, if you, if you use him and can lean on him, he will direct your ways. He will, he will, you know, guide your path. So like, it just, he gives me, he inspires me to yeah. push on and just trust that God will part the seas for me and mm. cre create a way. It's more about your availability than your ability. That right. is so critical and you're right there's this this fabulous conversation of like hey moses i want you to do this crazy thing and he's like wait a second no not me he's like yeah you no not me yeah you okay but what if what if they don't believe me what if they don't like me what if what if i can't do this and he's like i'll take care of it i'll take care of it i'll be your mouth i'll be and then I, there's this one scene which i think will be which stands out and will show up for you as well in your story um from what i understand where where he says you know what, how are they going to believe me? And God says, what's in your hand? He says, it's a staff. And the staff is more than a piece of wood, right? It represents who he is. He is a shepherd. So of course he's going to go and lead these people. Like, so of course it's this thing that's in your hand. What's that? I've asked that question of so many people. What's in your hand? What's the thing that goes beyond what you do, but is deeply in who you are? That's the call on you. Hmm. Do you agree? Yeah. <laughs> is that what you've seen in your life? Like, is that, that's it. It's like, it comes, it's something deeper. It's, it's beyond, you know, the skills that you have. It's something about who you are that, that is showing up now more than ever. Yeah. I would say, I would say, because like, um, sometimes I, yeah, sometimes I, sometimes I wonder how I am where I am today. And mm. I just like, you know, yeah, I had to do a lot of work, but my my natural skill set and what is in me my passion that's burning is what is carrying me forward in our business for yeah yeah okay so so let's open this up then what tell us about what it is that you do now what's the main work that you bring to the world now and what impact do you see it making when somebody interacts with you your business you know how do they leave different what do we see there mm -hmm. okay i'm gonna try to keep this brief <laughs> we'll just talk about it now right just what's the thing now my company is Fit Flavors, and mm -hmm. we are a local company in St. Louis that is like a meal prep company. Mm -hmm. So we prepare fresh meals for health conscious, busy people. That's our that's my elevator speech. Like that that's what we do. So if you're health conscious, like we got you. So 
we have five uh, storefronts in St. Louis. We have an e-commerce. So getting the food is very easy. We're very accessible. And that's one mm-hmm. of the big things I wanted to provide was convenience because um, before I got into this industry of, you know, I wouldn't say restaurant industry, but just like health and food. Um, I was a personal trainer for a decade. So like, okay, okay uh, hold on, hold on. So this is the thing. So you're going back. I want to just hold on right oh, here. Stick okay. with here. We'll okay. go there. So you, you're providing, I love this because you're providing food, you're creating food and, and getting it out there for health conscious, busy um, people. Busy people. Mm-hmm. And that, how does that help them? How does that impact them? What do they go away with? I mean, obviously food, but then what does that do for them? I got a DM yesterday from a woman I don't know. She's like, hi, Jillian, you don't know me. Um, I started um, using Fit Flavors like last year and it's completely changed my life. I've lost 45 pounds. I haven't changed anything, but just choosing you over eating out fast food. Mm. Um, I just want you to know what type of impact you make. Um, no need to respond. I just want you to know your, your business has changed my life. So, you know, like messages like that. And I get that yeah. a lot like, in the store. So like, I know what we're putting out is a good thing. Like, so what do you think when she says changed her life? Like, what is it that, what has it brought her more energy, more time, more freedom? Like what's that thing that you would land on that is like, this is the result. Confidence. I would think confidence would be another thing. Like when people start to get their health back and they lose weight and they start feeling better and they're able to do things better. They're just more confident to go out, more confident to speak, more confident to go for a, a job that they might yeah. want confident to, you know, start, start an exercise program, more confident in life, you know, when you're feeling better and you're taking care of yourself. So, so it's so interesting, right? You're like, oh yeah, no, I, I, yeah. I, providing meals for people. I'm creating, I'm, I'm selling food and you, and you're like, yeah, but it goes, it creates this deep internal impact mm-hmm. that this person is now more confident to go and step up to a job interview show their face, start or end a relationship, you know, do all the things that, that really they're sitting on that really matter in -hmm. life that they know they need to do. And you're saying when they get more healthy, they get more confident to do those things. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's impact. So where does this idea then for you is like, is that how you feel right now when you show up? Like right now, as you say this, are you like, yeah, I am, I am oozing confidence in my life. This is this is a confident person. Um, yes. And I think that's just because I think my confidence comes from like my self-discipline, like yeah. a pretty self-disciplined person. Like I have very high expectations for myself and I can keep a promise with myself. So like mm. if I do something, I don't over like, I don't like, I give myself a lot of grace. Like if I don't meet a deadline, you know, like, and I want to attain the goal, like I just continue at it until I pursue it. And yeah. I reach my goals. Um, so I, I have this tenacity to show up for myself. And so that breeds my confidence. Like I I know what I'm going to follow through with, even if I know I can't do it fast. Like I know I'll get there or I'll find a way with help from, you know, so. Well, it sounds like it's the same result. It's, it's, you know, somebody comes across, they, they, they get fit flavors. They, they connect with you in that way. And, and what are they doing? They're choosing themselves. They're putting themselves first. They're, they're stay, they're taking control of what they can control. And then that does yeah. exactly what you're talking about. It creates this morsel of self-discipline. Mm-hmm. Say, I'm going to focus on this. And then a year later, it's changing someone's life. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's cool. I love, Where- <laughs> I, love I love what we do. I know it. Yeah. I know it's acting. I know it is impacting people for sure. So where does that idea of, uh, you know, confidence and, and, and discipline, even I love that word too. Um, where does that, that's who you are now. Uh, where does that begin for you in your life? Like early, early, like as a kid, you know, were you confident? Were you lacking confidence? Uh, was there, were you always this disciplined, um, Mm -hmm. person? What was that household like? Well, like, where does that idea begin for you? Totally. I would say was disciplined. I was not confident. So mm. I'm an athlete and mm-hmm. growing up, I played a lot of softball. That was like my main sport. And yeah. my father was a huge, um, he, he had, a, he had a huge impact on me as an athlete. Mm. Um, I loved sports. So like, I always wanted to play in practice, but my father would take me for extra practices with him Mm -hmm. and him and I created this bond I would say when I was in middle school um he got me on a select travel team and I was I was very good and I was the youngest player on my team um and 
he used to take me to um, the ball field to practice and he would take a bucket of golf balls. And he would say, if you could hit a golf ball, you can hit a softball. So he, nice. <laughs> that's like, if you can dodge a wrench, yeah. you can dodge a ball. <laughs> but no, for real. So I was, um, I was always the number two hitter. So I was very strong with like bunting. And so I did slap bunts, uh, drag bunts, switch hitter. Like I did all that kind of stuff. Like the little yeah. hitter that was fast that could get on base. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so we would practice that with golf balls. <laughs> and then um, I played shortstop and third base and center field. And so my dad used to make me get down on my knees. He'd say, put your hand behind your back, take your glove off and catch these golf balls with your bare hand. <laughs> and you would hit them at me. <laughs> Pardon me. <laughs> So I, how old are you at this point? Oh, I was probably 14, 15, 16. Yeah, we we practiced a lot when I was a little, cause when I got older, I was so good by then. And yeah. like, I, I was just, it, it was like not even competitive for me in high school. Like I had to be on a travel team because mm -hmm. I was far ahead of people, but like really when I was like 13, 14, probably that did he school, play like what, where does that yeah. come from? Was that, yeah, that was I mean, it? he yeah. loved baseball. My dad loves baseball. And, yeah. um, he, he just, my dad would come to the games and he would, he would study the signs of the other coaches. And by like the third or fourth inning, he would like call me over. He'd have the, he'd have the, you know, the signs figured out and he would, you know, we, he'd be passing me signs that they were going to, yeah. when yeah, they were going to yeah, do yeah. things and I would be calling them out to my team. So like, it was, it was, it was He's fun. banging a, a garbage can in the stands. No. So. <laughs> <laughs> no, but that's funny. Yeah. I just actually watched a whole thing on um, Altuve. The other day on, yeah. uh, was it uh, YouTube? That was an interesting, interesting story. But yeah, um, back to your question. So I think I instilled this discipline when I was younger um, yeah. with sports. I think sports are an amazing thing for kids. Um, so that, I was not the most confident. I wasn't confident with my body. I wasn't confident with my schooling. Mm -hmm. I was very insecure about my smarts because I did not, I mean, I tried really hard. I was like a B student. I would work really right. hard to get a B. Um, so like that made me very insecure. Um, so, so were you, did you feel like you were like striving again, like natural discipline or like, you know, you're being taught discipline, do this work hard and you will, you will be a better ball player, work yeah. hard and you will get better marks. Yeah. My so, dad was like, my dad was even big on like my presentation. Like he'd be like, you can't go out of the house like that. You look like a slob, like tuck your shirt right. in, fix your hair. Like my dad was and which is funny because he's my dad. He's not like, he's not even stylish. So um, right. he was just um, a little more present than my mom. My mom had a bigger job, so she was always working. Um, so that's why I have this story about my father. Mm -hmm. uh, but he he was always on me for those things. He was always on me to like, take care of my car and it won't break down on you. Get your oil changed, you know, keep right, your right, car right. clean. Like be, be neat. Don't be a dirty person. Like even with our house, like picking up around the house, like he was disciplined about cleaning up. And like, I took all of that and I've applied it to my life and I'm applying it with my kid. That's yeah, my favorite right. thing about my Yeah. Is the things that he like, he always used to say, chop, chop, come on. Or well, we're waiting if he'd be waiting on me and like, I'd be late. He, <laughs> so those are the tapes that you have playing in your head, right? That yeah, you just uh, like, Oh, I can we, hear that. Now my son will say that to me. He'll be like, mom, we're waiting. <laughs> so it's funny. It's come back around full circle. Yeah. This so is, uh, yeah, this is what's interesting, right? So if, if it's this at, at the beginning, it looks like discipline. It's uh, it, it, what I'm already seeing, right? There's this, like this journey from, simply do the thing, like just show up and do the thing. And it's, it's almost removing emotion from it. it's removing feeling from it. It's removing, um, you know, that, that sort of internal drive or like feel from it. It's just, just do the thing. Like, like this is your rhythm, this is your schedule and it will lead to success. And I would, I want to hear the middle part of this, but I'm already seeing if now there's this element of showing up confident, that is different than, than merely disciplined, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, there's confidence now to make those decisions because you know, it's even your journey in softball. You're like, yeah, at one point I had to practice. And then I just got good enough that of course I practice, but uh, practice, we're talking about practice. Like, of course you show up and you still do the work, but there's a natural gifting there that you're able to show up to the field with, which is like how you're showing up now. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, brilliant. I want to hear more of this story then, which shifts how that grows and develops and who you are kind of, you know, towards the end of high school and how that discipline 
served yes. you as you go forward. Um, yeah. Where do you go from there? So I did, I did get a, a scholarship for softball, but I chose not to take it. I think I was, I think it was just a little burnt out. I was very, I mean, I played softball all year round for mm -hmm. six years since seventh grade. And I think I was ready to work a little bit. I never had like, I had a little job, but I was just ready to just work and go to school and take a break from softball. So I just went to college. Um, I got hooked up with a guy who was not the best guy and he did not help my confidence at mm -hmm. all. He was very, very uh, wired in fitness. And so he made me have body images and, mm. or body issues. Like he just made me feel really insecure with my body. So that didn't help at all. And that's really the start of my nutrition journey and, right. you know, getting into fitness. I started with fitness and um, I started having not an eating disorder, but like um, I got super like rigid with my eating like this is good food this is bad food i can't right. eat that i can only eat this at these times and it has to be existing or not because i want to look this way and that's the only way to look this way i have to torture myself and i'm eating more strict than you so i'm better than you and like mm -hmm. this this mentality and this 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 narrative was forming in my head and i spent three years with this guy so it just got worse and worse and more distort more distorted mm. um and I was very successful with work. I um, started as a personal trainer. Um, I just love fitness. And um, oh. that's the career I first went into. And I was extremely successful. Um, I opened my own personal training studio when I was 22. Um, <clears throat> I finally broke up with that boyfriend and um, really started to learn who I was in life um, after I left him. And, and when I started learning about nutrition and really taking ownership about learning about nutrition, not just dieting, because dieting what? is following a diet nutrition is understanding science and what really happens in your body mm, what right. were you there say? we go yeah no I, I was just wondering what you know you're, you're feeling this way you're going through these things for three years you're kind of like you know feeling this this pressure this all these different uh distorted ideas of what's good and what's healthy and then and then it switches like what what you know what happens there to make you make a decision to leave him and and to lean in to, uh, to this studying nutrition, like, yeah. you know, was there a conversation? What, what so showed up there? I always had a passion to kind of learn about nutrition, but as I trained for years and years and on, what I started to learn was all of my clients struggled with their nutrition. And I was like, look, I train you three hours out of the week. I am not, I'm not the fairy godmother. Like right. you have got to change the way you're eating and living. If you're going to like live a healthy lifestyle and change your physique. And so food, I started to realize was a tool to get people results. So I engulfed myself in understanding macronutrients and how they worked in the body and how, you know, how is a carb digested different than a different type of carb? And what is alcohol doing when it's in your body? And, you know, why are all fats not created equal? And mm -hmm. so I started to understand the science behind it. And then I realized like I could kind of craft food in a way to do certain things when you ate it, you, you know, like Right. Uh, decrease your blood sugar levels, um, you know, balance it out, keep you full, um, all kinds of things like that. And what I was doing then, but I didn't realize was I was developing my concept and philosophy for fit flavors. Yeah. So, um, my confidence started to blossom when I started to change my perspective on nutrition. And it wasn't something that just clicked. It was uh -huh. something that took years. So yeah, I was with this loser guy for three years and he cheated on me. And I finally had the balls to leave him and I left right. him. And um, I had already kind of been dabbling in nutrition, but it, it was, um, it wasn't till I, I really got um, into culinary school. So let me go ahead and do you want me to keep kind of telling my story? Yeah. Here? So I just, I love, I love it because you, there's this, this idea of confidence and it's like, there's, again, it's, of course I was a good ball player and all those things. And sure. You might think that you're confident. And then you step into the situation where you're in this relationship. That's not good for you for a long time. And you're not liking how you look. So that confidence that, that we might think was there, um, is not showing up. And, and then again, there's this like, yeah, he cheated on me. And, and so at some point, something switches, some switch flicks where you say, I'm worth better than this. Mm -hmm. And I can learn not only how to make myself healthy, but the, again, turn this out towards other people and help them as well. Mm -hmm. That's a, that's an incredible, like, 
right? You know, hero story, hero journey, like, oh, this is when, yeah, nope, not anymore. I'm not going to take mm-hmm. that anymore. And confidence starts to, as you say, blossom. Um, but but kind of that's almost like the seeding of it. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And I think I think too, like I think sometimes people can be confident in some areas, but maybe not in others. And like the areas where you don't feel confident, it like if it's just an area you're not you don't need to be in, like that's not your lane and you don't know something about a topic, that's one thing. But if it's a lane that you need to know about, maybe your career, your Mm -hmm. relationship, your children, or, you know, your body, your health, like if you, you don't feel confident, I think that is a sign that you need to look a little deeper because you might not be living to your full potential because it's almost like you're not addressing what you need to fully take ownership of. And I was not addressing the fact that I was in a bad relationship and that I deserve better. I shouldn't be treated like that. And, you know, he, he broke me down mentally, like the things he said were hurtful and it, it killed my confidence, you know, but in the gym, I was extremely confident. I was a very knowledgeable trainer. I was extremely successful. My book was always full. So like at work, I was happy and confident. And at home, I was insecure with myself and my body. So it was almost like I wasn't living to the full potential of Jillian because I was letting him suppress me. So Mm. when we broke up, I bounced around. I went to another facility, did really well there, um, was running a program, created a, a whole like, like, uh, I called it body management systems. And it was, I managed your nutrition, your cardio, your, your, um, your weights. And it was just like a program to kind of get people going on. Like, this is how you need to live. This is some changes you can make. And um, within about a year or two, I decided to go off with some other trainers there and start my own gym. And so mm-hmm. at 22 is when I opened my own studio with, with a couple other people. I did that for three years. Yeah. Um, so on my 25th birthday, I had a falling out with my main partner and it was pretty ugly. Um, We just disagreed on some things and like where I thought we should be spending money. And at the time, you know, we were not profiting. Like I was not doing well at all. Like, thank God my husband was because he supported me hundred percent. I wasn't making my, I think I was paying myself $500 a month. So when I lost my business, it was, it was a bad time for me. I felt my ego was crushed. And so I I don't say I was depressed, but I started having really bad anxiety and I'd never had anxiety in my life. Um, I would wake up in the, in the middle of the night and feel like I couldn't breathe. And, you know, looking back now, I realized that I was just internalizing, like, what are you doing with your life, Jillian? You're a loser. You add no value. You, cause I, when I walked away from my business, I felt like I was on top and then I had nothing. And I was like, I went to to another gym and was training for somebody else part of my part-time hours. So it just crushed my ego. And yeah, um, well, it's another one of those, like, sort of, again, an external circumstance. That's like, you're looking at this thing to like, what can this do? What can this do? Can this, does this provide me confidence? Does this provide? And, and what you said earlier was like, yeah, but when you're seeing that, and then you're seeing a symptom of that, of something show up around that. So in this anxiety, I feel like dirt, all these things, that means that you you got something else going on that you need to, you need to work on. Yes. And, and was that, was this a time when that started for you? Like, did you start to go, Oh, there's something inside. So I didn't know why I was having this anxiety. And at the time I didn't know it was because I wasn't fulfilling my potential or because I was not following a passion or living to my, you know, adding value to the world. And I was just freaking out because I was stuck. Like I said, I felt like a loser and there was this emptiness in me that I was not fulfilled. And at the time I didn't have a relationship with God. I didn't have a relationship with Jesus and he wasn't a faith that I could fall back on. And it got so bad. Um, I did have, um, a panic attack one day and Mm -hmm. I didn't know it was a panic attack. I thought I was having a heart attack. So I called 911 and the paramedics came and they took me to the hospital and that was really fun. And, um, (laughs) <laughs> my husband was I mean trapped. was there people around you when you did that like did somebody uh, no, was with at you home or? I was at home by myself my husband was traveling so I went to the hospital by myself my mom and dad did not live in uh, Missouri at the time so I was there all by myself I didn't have many friends at the time because all I did was work literally I worked 60 hours 65 hours a week like I was a worker and um I just realized I didn't have many friends and it was a weird time for me and I remember when I was laying in that hospital bed after the nurse checked me out and checked my vitals, she's like, you're good, honey. She goes, I think you had a panic attack. And I was like, 
what? Like me freaking out? That's not yeah. me. She's like, has something traumatic happened to you in the last couple of weeks? And I'm like, funny, you should ask. I did lose my business. And I'm like a panic attack. And I laid in that bed, Alex. And I said, God, if you're real, show me. God, if you're real, help me. And that was my prayer. Mm. And so simple, comes, right? Yeah. So then, then comes my God story and God showed up big for me. So I remember my mom always having a relationship with Christ and like all my life, she forced me to go to church when I didn't want to go to church, but like, I grew up around it. I heard her, I watched her have a relationship with God. Um, so I always wondered like, you know, what if, what if God should, could show up for me? Like, could he help me? And when I got home from the hospital, the purpose driven life somehow showed up on my bookshelf. I don't remember how it ended up there. Um, I think a client had given it to me many years prior and I just sat down to read it. And that's how I started my daily devotion. So it really started with the 40 days yeah. and which is funny. Um, uh, Coming back to Moses. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's what I was going to say. I was yeah, like, yeah. didn't Moses go um, up on the mountain for 40 days to get the 10 commandments? There's a lot um, of 40 in there. He was wandering yeah, there's the desert a lot of 40 in years the or is, I don't know. Yeah. 40 years in the desert wandering. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So um, when I started doing that is when God presented himself three times to me. Do you want to hear those stories? I can make them really, really quick. <laughs> <laughs> you can't. You can't. <laughs> I love that. That's like, look, I've got some gold right here. Do you want it? Would you like it? Or I'll just keep that to myself. I just want to, no, be, no. Respect I just want to be respectful of your time and make sure you get everything you need from me. But, oh, it's uh, good. Look, I'm I, what I'm hearing here again, like this is coming up on like, you know, is you, I, we're looking for a, a turning point, right? A climax yeah. sort of. A, this, is the this is my climax. Um, a change sure. agent. Mm -hmm. I would say I probably had one other climax story in my life. Um, mm -hmm couple years ago, but this was the turning point in my life, um, was, th was these three things. Um, wow, that sounds deep. Uh, <laughs> so while I was studying all of this, um, the first lesson God presented to me was Jesus forgives and he loves you. And we are to forgive others. If we want our father in heaven to forgive us. And I said, dang it, how am I going to forgive Scott? I hate him as my ex-business partner. And I said, God, I don't know how to do this. You're going to have to change my heart. I, 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 I want to forgive him. Like I should. Right. So like, yeah. how do I do that? So that was my prayer. The next day I drove past him in a car driving down the street. And that evening he texted me, we talked and he was very cordial, very kind. And I'm like, really sorry how things turned out. And I said, yeah, I am too. And you know, we, we, we talked about some things. It was just through text message. And he goes, I'm sorry. I go, I'm sorry. And I forgive you. And I was like, oh my gosh, God answered my prayer. It was so, and I felt this. Like before prayer. you even know that you're typing the words, they get sent out. You're like, it, it was what? just, yeah. And, mm -hmm. and, um, I was like, wow, that's cool. Mm -hmm. Um, so the second thing that happened to me was, um, at the time I was working part-time at on that other gym and I was lucky enough to have this man who was working the front desk with me. We'd always have the same shift and he was a little, a little older than me, but he had shared his God story with me and we kind of connected on that. And, you know, he had known what I'd gone through with my business and he was really just like a sounding board for me. I feel like God put him in my life in that point in my story, really just to be my angel. Um, I actually write about him in my book, mm -hmm. um, I think just how God provide, provides these people who are there to just kind of nudge you along on your journey to kind of just know God is real and continue to seek him. And he encouraged me to read the gospels. So after I was done with my 40 days or whatever, um, I was reading the gospels. And I, when I started the book of Matthew, I believe it was right after the genealogy, mm -hmm. uh, I'm reading about <laughs> the, uh, the three wise men, the camels and all that. And I'm like, this is bogus and I close my book and I go to Google and I'm Googling the three wise men. I'm like, how these people are going to go on camels across the thing, follow a star. Like, I just don't, I don't know. So, um, I stayed up to like 4 AM, um, researching that. And what I found was like, why God used the, the Magi and he used them to draw attention to the baby Jesus. And so I, I was fascinated by the story. Long story short, end up at the farmer's market that Friday shopping and, I was buying soaps from an artisan. She probably had a hundred soaps. 
And she, there was, it was, it was actually the daughter. It was a little girl working. She's probably like 11 or 12. She had bib overalls on. Her hair was a mess. She was dirty. Uh, I figured she was just like a farm girl or something. And I said, Hey, I'd like to buy one of your soaps, but there's just so many flavors. I can't decide. Do you have a favorite soap? And she looked at me and just like eye contact right at me. And yeah. she reached out, she grabbed a soap, she held it out in my face. She looked at me so serious. I'll never forget it. And I was like, why is she looking at me like this? And she goes, <laughs> <laughs> like, just like confident, confident, very confident mm -hmm. for an 11 year old. And she goes, this is my favorite soap. And it said frankincense and myrrh. And I'm like, are you kidding me? And I, I like at that same instant, like the sun was shining down on my face. And I looked up and I said, oh my gosh, he knows. He knows I'm doubting him. And he said, Jillian, I hear you. I know you're seeking me. Keep seeking me. Hmm. And I was like, holy cow, holy cow, holy cow. So I was like, maybe that's a coincidence. Maybe that's just a coincidence, you know? Well, I go to work like the next Monday. I tell Matt what happens. And while I'm in discussion with him, while I'm having this conversation, a woman walks up to the counter don't know her, never met her before. She reaches out over the counter. She goes, she touches my hand. She goes, hi, are you Jillian? And I said, yeah, can I help you? Do you want a smoothie? You know? And she's like, uh, and she got a little nervous and then she got really quiet. Started looking down her face, kind of started turning white. Like I was like, what's, what's up with this? Thing? And she goes, I wanted to let you know, you've been on my heart lately. And I'm like, okay. I didn't know who she was. And then, and then she reached out and she grabbed my forearm. And then she said, God wanted me to tell you that everything is going to be okay. Mm -hmm. And that was it. And I never saw her again. And <laughs> I, that was number three. Was that moment that was, number three? That These all actually happened within seven days. So first I got this answered prayer. Yeah. I got the sign that he hears me. And then he spoke to me so through some random moment. I that mean, everything's going to be okay everything's going to be okay. And I thought, you know, I had to chew on it for a minute, but, um, I, I, that's when I was, that's when I started realizing I need to trust and this is what faith is. And so mm -hmm. I said, God, I'm going to trust you. And really within the next couple of weeks, I, I mean, my, my time with him was so important. I spent every day, sometimes a couple hours in the word, and it was really a good time for me and him. It was like, it was like the beginning of our relationship. And right. I, I have so many journals from that time. And it's just me like learning what it's like to be a Christian and trusting God. And what I felt like God said to me after that was, I want you to follow your passion, Jillian. I know it's food and cooking. I want you to trust that I have a plan for your life. And I want you to do what you love. And I will be with you every step of the way. I've always felt like that was his message for me. And I started cooking for my clients right after that. Um, mm -hmm. and How I long decided, ago was this? This was in 2009. Wow. Okay. And um, in 2010, I enlisted in Le Cordon Bleu and went to culinary school. It was always a dream of mine, but I couldn't do it while I owned my business. And at that time, I was working 30 hours a week at the gym. So I was like, yeah. I'll go at night. So I went, I trained during the day, went to school at night, and I cooked Friday, Saturday, Sunday. For your clients, giving stuff to your clients. Yep. Yep. That's how I started Fit Flavors. And then, okay. So, so again, what I'm, what I'm hearing, I mean, phenomenal stories, phenomenal moments. You've got these, wow, spiritual awakening kind of moments here yeah. that, uh, the, the thing that I heard through that is, you know, it's this beautiful belief that we can carry with us that is if you're willing to look for it like there's magic all around and you know what what that looks like and and i think it's as we look for it you start to see and hear you see that girl with her intense eyes and you recognize that and then you see the connection with that to what you were reading yesterday and you see these connections show up and all of a sudden the whole thing becomes not only connected, but meaningful. Mm -hmm. And there was this, again, I, I would go, what I'm hearing in your story is, is there's this, you could do just about anything you want. You could put your discipline to something and do it. Is that, is that fair to say? 
Yeah, after writing a book last year, I believe that. <laughs> right, <laughs> right. And, yeah. and and let's go back and what's what to give credit. You said your dad taught you so much of what discipline and hard work will give you. And so you, as you've got that foundation, now you go forward, you're like, again, I can do anything. I can start a business. Let's start a business. Oh no, that doesn't work out. Okay, what am I going to do now? As you start to seek and look, you start to discover, again, it's not just about that the, the rhythm, the routine, the discipline, even as you talk about your relationship with God, I, I would guess and fill me in on this, but where you said it started out really like, I've got to do this. I'm doing this. I'm spending this time every day. It's now become a much more fluid thing. Is that true? Or is it, is it, do you mean just something that I've helped kept? Yeah, I guess so. Yeah. Yeah, totally. I mean, I've had my ebbs and flows, like nobody's perfect. Sure. But I mean, I've, I've definitely, I call them like dry spells, but, um, Right now, I'm in a, a, a hundred days, intentional faith. I'm reading my word every day. Um, like it was sometimes a week, but now I'm like, I'm loving the everyday thing because it's just, it's just a different level and a different connection when you are dialed in to what yeah. God has for you. Um, it's amazing. And he is doing very powerful things in my life right now. So tell me about this book. Oh, uh, so. <laughs> It's crazy. It's just been a long process. And um, it's so funny because, you know, my whole life, I thought I was never smart. I could never write a book. Mm -hmm. you know, that is just what smart people do. And so I wanted to write a cookbook because that's the safe, easy thing to do, right? I can do recipes is what I do for a living. But when I would start writing my recipes, I'd like want to explain like why I did those things in my recipes, because, you know, there's reason behind my, my, my recipes, like there's purpose behind the nutrition. So like, I kind of explain it. And like, I'd add some like mental stuff in there, some mindset stuff. And what I realized was I had all these blurbs and my publisher was like, Jillian, you're like writing two different books. And I'm like, no, 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 no. I want the cookbook to have all this stuff. And she's like, Jillian, I think this is great, but you really have two separate things. Which direction do you want to go? And I'm like, oh, I fought it. I was kind of like agitated at her, but I was scared. I was scared to just write a book. And I finally said, God, what do you want me to do? And I just, I think I sat down one day and I just wrote and I was like, I'm going to trust you on this. And I said, fine, I'll write a book. And what I came up with was I did write my story because I feel like my story is what led me to my nutrition philosophy, but also ultimately led me to how I'm helping people make a mindset shift around their nutrition. So it's funny, it's yeah. almost like my personal life experience and my everything that I went through is what birthed my business, which ultimately gives me my purpose. So like, it kind of all goes hand in hand. Hi. So I, um, sorry, my son just walked in yeah. and he's like, totally crashed this podcast. Oh my gosh. He lost it. It's all good. Can you edit thankfully, this? Out? Thankfully, you know, Sid and she'll edit this out. This is all okay. good. <laughs> Hi. I thought it's so amazing. This is Salvatore. Hi, Hi Sal. You I'm you, Alex. Tooth? you always lose your tooth at Nanny's oh, house. Me, she's should be at the dinner table. Oh, you know what? what? I don't know. There's somewhere here. Go find them. Do you close the doors when you leave, guys? Here's sorry, see, I told you they were. I'm so sorry. I, my husband shouldn't have let them come in. Can you close the door, Vincent? No. I'm so sorry. No. <laughs> okay. This is the this is the joy of it all. I love Vincent, it. close the door. And you, that one, close them. <laughs> I'm sorry. Okay, That's it. So, I'm leaving all that in. That's it. I <laughs> so I, I had just said that it had like um, created my passion, correct? Mm -hmm. And then yep. stop there. Okay. Um, I lost my train of thought. Um, so this is okay. I'll, let me let me lead you in. So this is what I. This is everything that I believe about story. Is exactly you're saying your story has really led led into your business and your purpose, and this is. Again, this is the belief that I carry into this world, Jillian, is, is that your story is your story matters because you matter. Your story is what's going to stand out above your services. When you understand your story, you understand what you've got to bring to the world and your why. And then you can go and do that however you want. But you started to understand as you've gone through this, you are starting to you're understanding why I'm here which then is allowing you to say like, well, then what can I do? Well, I can cook. I can cook for people. I can help. Oh, and as I cook, I can help them develop their own confidence to understand their why and all that. And so how's that going to come out? Well, let's do storefronts. Let's do 
you know, cookbook, let's do it. And then let's do my own storybook. Let's do whatever it is, podcast, whatever I can do to get that message out around, you know, this idea of confidence, of inspiration. I almost feel like inspired is a word that defines you. I get that a lot, actually. Yeah. You know, and too, like, um, sharing my faith has really become a passion of mine. Um, it, it's scary sometimes to be open and honest about your faith, you know, because like, you know, you don't know how people are going to accept you. And I feel like part of my responsibility as a Christian is to share. Um, I know that's our responsibility. So I'm, I'm, I'm stepping out in faith even more in the last year and a half and just starting to talk more about it because God is the reason I have fit flavors. He's, he's the reason for my success. Um, he's taught me many lessons. Um, and you know, I want to give him the glory for the business because like, I, like I said, it's him, not me. I'm just, I'm, I'm the operator and I've always felt like that. And he's, he's telling me what to do and leading me in the direction. That's why I need to stay in constant communication with him. So I can make sure that I'm leading the business in the way that it, it's going to honor him. Yeah. Well, and this is what's so, as we kind of land the plane here, this is what I, I, I love so much about diving into this story and how you've brought us into your journey here, Jillian. And thank you so much for opening up all these different aspects sure. of this. And um, what I hear and see, again, is this, this journey of, I almost go from like, again, we were talking about discipline, but just for, for, um, you know, for the sake of, of picking some good words here, uh, I'm going to go with intention. And if you grew up with these like intentions around you, like, I know, I know what I'm going to do. I, I'm going to do it. I've got this goal. I've got this, this is what I'm going to do. And then that carries you through to the point where, um, you know, you could take any of these moments. Right. So, and then finally I left my boyfriend who was, you know, a dirt bag and, and I had the confidence to do that. I just felt like that was the right thing and that I would be taken care of. And I started a business and I lost the business but, you know, knew that somehow I can get through this until I had a panic attack. And then I was like, well, okay, where's God? God, where are you? Help me in this. And then you have these three significant moments that show you that you're not alone, that you are cared for, that you're going to be okay. And now you get forward and you get to this part and look at where you're doing. You've simply put your skills into motion. You've taken this intention all along and put it into something that is now exploding and creating massive impact. What I hear, yours is a story of from intention to inspiration, and you're helping people do the same thing. They come in with an intention to eat healthy, and within a year, you know, to this person's comment, she's she's inspired to live better all around. Mm -hmm. That's cool. Thank you for, <laughs> for recapping that. That was really sweet. That was cool to hear too. Yeah, it's it's been a journey. Yeah, and I think... I think sometimes when you're in the thick of it, like you don't know what's going on. And now when you age and you're more seasoned, you can go back and you can, you can look at what you've achieved and you can connect the dots. Yeah, you know, yeah. I, I understood why I went through and had the anxiety. It was because I didn't have a foundation. Like I was not rooted. I was so like, just looking to my worldly, my worldly stuff to, 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 for my, my, like, um, I'm trying to, I'm not getting the right words right here. I was looking to the world to fulfill me in, in, you know, like having the job or having the business. Yeah. I didn't have my faith, you know what I'm saying? So mm -hmm. like, as I've matured, like things have just changed in my life and, um, you know, business has not been all uphill. There's been some ups and a lot of downs and like one really, really big down that lasted for three years. And, you know, the, so it was so hard. I wanted to sell the business. There was a point where I was like, I'm done. I can't do this anymore. I'm throwing in the towel. I've given it my all. And like, I just couldn't, I couldn't quit. I couldn't quit. And I'm like, why am I, why am I sticking around? And like, honestly, I just felt like God wouldn't want it to end like that. And I just, I, I said, this can't be the end. How, and it turned around and it, it really turned around. And like, while I went through all that, I think God let me go through that because in order to inspire and be a person with experience, you have to have gone through that stuff. It's, it, it shaped me, it seasoned me, it thickened my skin. 
Um, it's given me so much more perspective. It's created so much more gratitude in my life. Um, so, I mean, it's a learning experience for sure, you yeah. know? Well, yeah. And again, I just say what I hear and what I see in you is somebody who is showing up just again, let's go back to that burning bush story. It, it seems like you're showing up just with open hands kind of every day saying, Hey, here I am. Like, what do you have for me? <laughs> and, yeah. and if that's the case, you know, you can't lose. I, I, I just think that's it. That's, that's, that is the invitation to be present, to be whole and to, to then step forward with a mission. And, you know, what could, what more can we do? with our lives than that, than just simply say, Hey, here I am. And, yeah. Um, be available. Uh, yeah. And, and, and for the people coming in looking for like, Hey, give me the quick hit. Give me the quick, quick answer. You're like, great, I've got it. But what I'm actually about is getting you to the point where you can do this on your own. Like you're, confident. you're yeah, you're confident. You you're inspired. You, you've got this. Mm -hmm. And, and that all comes with, with where you're at right now and where you're going with this. So for people who, who are in that space, who are like, look, I need a quick hit, but also I want to like, I want what you live. I want that kind of faith. I want that kind of lifestyle. How do I do that? Oh my goodness. Jillian is, she must have the answer because she's been on that journey. So I'm sure she can help me. Where do they go? How do they start a conversation with you to, to, to really get into this? Um, well, I, I would say if you subscribe to my newsletter, um, it comes out every Thursday. It's very faith-based. Um, it's it's just a good a good way to be fed um, in a way. Um, but if you want to connect with me, like people respond to me all the time. That's a great way to open dialogue. Um, but you can always get me through social platforms. So um, Instagram or Facebook, both Jillian Tedesco. I prefer Instagram. Great. Love it. Yeah, you, and I'm, and I, I have a podcast. It's also called Owning the Weight. Yeah. Um, so it's more, it's faith, it's business, it's nutrition. Those are the, those are the, the main topics. And when is the book? When's owning the weight, the book it's, coming out? It will be here in April. I'm really excited. Um, it's just, I'm, I'm waiting. It's just, everything's backed up with printing. So um, it's, it'll be here in April. So I will be I mean, selling the book um, at Fifth Flavors and on uh, my website, just JillianTedesco.co. Brilliant. As you wait for it to come. I mean, it's just yeah. fitting for the yeah. title, obviously. You're like, God, yeah. did I have I mean, to call like, it that? <laughs> I literally thought of that the other day after I got off the phone with my publisher, we were talking about like how to put it on Amazon or whatever. And I'm like, you know, I still got to just wait. And I said, you know what, this is God's timing. There's a reason it's coming out in April. Like I thought I was going to have this book in December and have it for the new year. And it did not And I have so much stuff going on at work. I would have never been able to market this book and right. campaign for it the way that I wanted properly. And he is aligning everything. And I just, I don't care. I'm trusting that there's a reason it's coming out April 1st and I'm going with that. Yeah. Well, you have shared, you know, parts of your story today. It feels like we got a whole picture and yet there is so much more that people can still find out. And so I'm sure that people are going to go and find you, uh, connect with you on social, uh, go get your book, you know, whenever they listen to this and it's out, um, pre-order, whatever it is, um, they will find you. And I'm just so grateful for your time today and for opening up how you did and, and sharing your story of inspiration with us. Thank you, Jillian. Thank you for having me on. I appreciate it. It was fun.